Hi, I'm Christy and you're watching A Fostered Life. And today I want to offer five tips for how to support your foster child's parents. When you become a foster parent, it's one of the expectations is that you understand that the goal of foster care is first and foremost to reunify children with their parents. If that's not possible, they begin to explore other options, but reunification is the number one goal of foster care. When a child is taken from their parents and placed in foster care, the idea is that the children are in a safe place where they're gonna be well cared for while their parents have some time to do the hard work that it takes to deal with whatever the issue is that you know brought them to the authorities' um, attention in the first place. If it's neglect, if it's um, that they don't have parenting skills and they don't know what they're doing, if it's that they are addicted to substances and they need some time to go through detox and rehab um, and to prove that they're in, you know, that they're in recovery. Um, it may mean that they need to secure stable housing or um, any number of other things, but those things take time. And, um, and so when a child comes into foster care, there's usually at least six months that the parents have, while they're working with their end of things and they have a social worker working with them and all of that, and the children are, are in foster care. So um, I'm learning more and more through relationships that I've developed with various parents over the years, um, people I've gotten to know through um, conferences I've been at and panels I've spoken on and um, just being involved in this world. I've gotten to know a number of people who um, have had their kids in foster care, or um, I've gotten to know several of the parents of kids that we've had in our home. And, um, and so I'm, I'm bringing some of these things to you from that experience and from conversations that I've had um, over the last several years. So um, I hope this is helpful, and I hope it kind of frames for you the idea that while it's not the foster parent's responsibility to um, to make sure that the parent gets well, because really as a foster parent, your priority is to care for the children in your home. It also needs to be said that caring for your children means caring for their parents. And I think that that's something that it's taken me a while to really realize. Um, and I think, and I've talked with enough people to know that that isn't a natural way of thinking. So I'm kind of wanting to put that idea out there that um, part of caring for the children in your home is caring for their parents. And if reunification is going to happen and if it is going to be the best possible outcome for them, um, doing things to help your kids help their parents or help doing things to help the parents of the kids who are in your home, it's all part of creating success down the line for them and for your relationship and for their relationship for the children and their parents during this time of separation. So um, with that in mind, here are five things that I hope you'll do if you're a foster parent um, for the parents of the children who are in your care. Number one is um, to show up for visits. So when children are in foster care, one of the first thing, things that happens is that visitation, um, a visitation schedule is created. This is usually mandated by the court, and it is part of what a, a parent needs to do in order to um, prove that they're able to safely and effectively parent their children. And it's also the visitation is part of maintaining the, the bond between the child and the parents. And visitation is also a huge part of making sure that that parent stays motivated to get their child back. Um, if they're fighting addiction especially, that is such an uphill battle. And um, studies have shown that with parents whose kids are in foster care, the less they see those kids, the less motivated they are to do the really, really, really hard, 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 hard work of getting clean. Um, so visits are a huge part of keeping parents motivated um, and bonded and connected and attached with their children so that if reunification happens, the children are, you know, they, they know who they're going back to in terms of their parents. This is especially true for little ones who might be in foster care from, you know, from before they can really remember their you know, cognitively remember their parents, but also for older children who do remember their parents but then are, are separated from them, it helps to keep that connection. So visitation is really important. 
if your child's the child in your care if your foster child's parents are coming to visits then um, show up for those visits have some face-to-face -face contact with their parents um, introduce yourself and say I I just thought you might want to know who your parent, who your kids were with, and um, I just wanted to let you know we're totally for you, and um, we're for your recovery, and we're for you know for you and for your kids, and um, that kind of a message can go so far, because um, parents whose kids are in foster care, they are so filled a lot of times they're so filled with shame and they're so broken over their own brokenness and they are filled with shame and they're filled with regret and that can be debilitating and it can oftentimes it can just lead them to even more decisions that um, keep them away from their kids and so um, letting them know that that they have your support and that you're not over there bad mouthing them to their kids um, it can go a long way for them to feel like okay maybe i can do this um, and um, so showing up for visits introducing yourself um, communicating some hospitality and um, trying to protect their dignity as much as possible um, is huge <laughs> So the second thing that I recommend is having a journal or notebook that you send back and forth to visits. So I was very aware that when I would come to visits and I would meet um, kids' moms, that, that that's their time. That's not the time for us to sit down and have long conversations. Um, but I did want there to be a mechanism in place for them to ask me questions and for me to ask them questions and for me to share things with them, pictures, um, stories about their kids. So the notebook became kind of a, a, an important part of that. Um, and so I would just have like a, a journal or notebook. Um, sometimes I get one with a lock and I give one key to the parent and I keep another key. And it's sort of a way of, of us partnering together and knowing like this is our, um, our communication. Um, and I would write things like if they were sick or if something happened at school that they could ask about like I you know I remember one time writing about a school party they had that one of the kids was really excited about and just saying you maybe maybe you could ask them about that because I know they'll want to tell you about it um, if we had a child who was struggling with you know constipation I might write that in the journal and just say you know don't give them anything that gives makes them constipated because they've been struggling with constipation um, um, and then and then she would ask me back about medication or ask me about sleep ask me about how they're eating I mean natural things that a mom wonders about her kids and um, can feel very helpless not knowing I wanted there to be a portal and I found out later um, that that meant so much to 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 several of the moms that I've engaged with over the course of our time in foster care so that's um, just a really important thing um, and I think overall between showing up for visits and c keeping a journal or notebook um, you're you're acknowledging their dignity and and trying to protect their di dignity and acknowledging their um, that they are the mom that they are that child's mom and that they need to know and should know how their child is doing. Um, pictures of things, school pictures, projects. One of the things we had a mom request school papers. She wanted to see what they were working on at school. And I thought that was great. Just to keep her connected, to keep her connected as much as possible. Number three is talk about your child's parents at home with your, their parent. Let's see. Talk about the parents with the child. Um, I would ask kids, you know, what are your favorite things that your mom makes for you? We had one child with us, and um, and I said to him once, I, or it was really early, it might have been the first or second night that he was with us, and I said, um, what's your favorite food that your mom makes for you? And he got all excited, and he was telling me all about Top Ramen and how much he loves Top Ramen and how they have Top Ramen for, for dinner every night, and, and he just loves Top Ramen. And I was like, great, now I know what we're having for dinner tonight. And I, you know, I got Top Ramen, and I added a bag of frozen vegetables to it, and um, uh, steamed broccoli and he just loved it and he was like you know for him it was a taste of home um, 
Uh, and then that kind of also subtly gives him permission to talk about his mom if he wants to. I think that um, a lot of kids in foster care, especially older kids, they don't know if they're supposed to talk about their parents or not, or there's a lot of pain associated, or maybe they wonder if you don't like their parents or whatever. So anything that you can do to give your kids permission to talk about their parents, um, offer to put a picture of their parents in their bedroom if they want that, or give them a little album of pictures of their mom. Um, whatever you can do to, um, to keep the child and the mom, especially the mom or the dad, connected um, and mindful of each other and, and to create the sense or the vibe that we're all in this together, that's a really beautiful thing to do. So, um, so number three is talk about, you know, positively talk about their parents and let them know that it's okay for them to talk about if they want to. Now we've had, we've had situations where kids absolutely did not want to talk about their parents. Um, we've had kids where, who were very angry at their parents for doing things that got them placed in foster care. Um, we've had kids who um, refused to talk to their parents on the phone. Uh, we had some kids who um, I got on the phone with their, with their mom probably day three or four of them being with us in foster care and uh, introduced myself to her on the phone. Um, made sure she knew you know who we were and where her kids were and and then she wanted to talk to them and then I was trying to get them on the phone and and the older child refused to talk on the phone to his mom and and then I was kind of like well you know I said I think he's just really feeling um, some emotions right now he doesn't know what to do with but we'll try again tomorrow in that particular case the kid never talked to his mom on the phone and um, and you know I respected his right to do that too. So there might be times when you will talk to them, but their kids will not want to, and that's all part of their journey. But I, th I think still, um, still you as the foster parent, extending that hospitality, being available, um, asking good questions of them. You know, I ask as much as I can, I ask bio parents or, you know, kids' parents, um, as much as I can, I ask their parents, like, what are their favorite foods? You know, what do they do at night to go to sleep? I mean, um, if they can give you some of that input, it's super helpful. And it's all about trying to help the kids feel more secure and at home and also helping them to know that they're not having to pick, you know, loyalties um, between foster parents and, and their parents. There's no competition. I mean, just really trying to create this sense of we're all in this together is huge. Number four, make sure that in as much as you can, that parents know when doctor's appointments and things that they're allowed to be at um, are happening. So one of the cases that we had, um, the um, the child's mother would meet me at the doctor's office and she and I would sit back and let her interact with the doctor and let her kind of run the you know be the parent on site for the doctor's appointment for kids who are in foster care or for parents whose kids are in foster care they have the right to be at doctor's appointments um, and unless there are certain extenuating circumstances where you know a court or a social worker or whatever has mandated that they can't be they should be there if they want to be they should have all of the information that they need so make sure that the parent has a way of reaching you um, I, I know of people who have created Google Voice uh, accounts and just given that number just to the parents of kids who are in their home so that that parent has a way of texting them um, or um, create an email address just for that parent and so the two of you can you know correspond that way maybe send them pictures that way um, and um, uh, but have a mechanism in place where that parent can reach you um, it's possible that there are scenarios where that's not a healthy thing, but in the four years that we've been foster parents with the over 10, 11 at least kids who have come through our care, um, I've never had an experience where my interactions with their parents went south. Does it happen? I'm sure it does. Um, 
I've never had it happen. It's only ever been a good thing when I've been able to have a relationship with the parents of the kids who are in my home. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's not without its challenges. Um, you know, you definitely have to decide on a regular basis that your position here is not to judge that mother. Um, of course it's easy to do, and I would be a liar if I said that there aren't times when it's very hard to not be judgmental, but I find that, um, that that's a choice we make, right? And that um, part of being a, a, a good foster parent is, is deciding that my job here is not to judge the parents of the kids who are in my care, but it's to love them, love their kids, um, and to, to take as good care of the, of the kids as I can. Um, so yeah, so making sure that they know about these appointments. I've talked to a lot of people who just said, you know, they had a hard time reaching social workers. Social workers are overworked and underpaid. They have so many huge fires to put out. It's, it's very likely, very possible, very frequent that they're not able to return every phone call or, you know, get back to everybody in a timely manner. As a foster parent, you could just send a text and say, hey, little Johnny has a doctor's appointment and I wanted to make sure you knew about it in case you wanted to join me. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, if they can be there, I'm sure they will. And, um, and it's a great way to keep the parents involved in their kids' lives. So then the last thing that I would mention, tip number five for supporting your foster child's parents is to pray for them. Um, or if you're not a religious person and you're not somebody who prays, to, um, to decide in your heart that you're for them. Um, as I've already said, it is easy to be judgmental sometimes. It is easy to hear um, some of the stories and witness some of the effects of what precipitated a child coming into foster care and to get really frustrated with with the parents. Um, you know, I have talked before about, um, maybe not on this channel, but I've talked with people about how much of foster care is picking up the pieces of someone else's mess and trying to bring, bring you know, put it back together or trying to, to create an environment where a child who has a lot of brokenness and a lot of issues, maybe some you know, um, brain development issues from prenatal exposure or neglect or uh, trauma. Um, you have children in your care who are deeply affected by choices that their parents made. And it is very hard not to spend some time being super angry at their parents, um, judgmental of them, and, um, you know, frustrated. If you're a foster parent, you're gonna spend some time in that space. What I'm here to tell you right now is that it won't help anything. So while your natural instinct will be to go there, um, you can make decisions that will actually be helpful. And one of those decisions is to be for that parent. Even if that parent ultimately never gets their kids back, you can still be for them, for their health, for their recovery, for their redemption. Um, and it is a much better thing to be for that parent than to spend a whole lot of time being against them, judging them, uh, being frustrated with them. So um, for me, as a person of faith, that means prayer. And making that person the object of my prayer has been one of the most um, helpful and healing things that I've done um, as a foster parent. When I was a little girl and I used to come home and say, I hate that person for what they did to me. It might be someone at school. I hate her, she blah, 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 whatever it was that hurt me. My, my mother would say to me, we need to start praying for her because you can't hate someone that you're praying for. Um, I have found that to be true. And when I'm angry at someone for anything, if I begin to pray for them and really make them and their redemption and their wholeness and their healing part of my prayer life, my heart toward them begins to change. And so my fifth tip for you is to make it your mission to pray for, or at the very least decide to be for the parents of the kids who are in your care. Um, their healing is not up to you. Their restoration is not up to you. 
Um, but, but as a foster parent, you can play a role in creating an overall environment of thriving for the children and for their parents. Um, and I'll also share this, when you choose to do it that way, if the children are returned to their parents, if and when um, they're returned to their parents, those parents are gonna be a lot more likely to want you to remain in their children's lives if you have done the hard work of building a good relationship with them during the time that their kids were in your care. I know of, of several um, foster parents who had kids in their care for over a year, for a long period of time, sometimes a couple years, and the kids were ultimately returned. And those foster parents are still part of those children's lives their parents recognized that these foster parents had become important to their kids. And, um, and because the foster parents had treated them with respect, had protected their dignity, had honored them as the child's parents, when the children were returned, there was a trust already in place that um, the parents knew they could trust and count on and um, and be loved by the foster parents. And when that can happen, it's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna say it can't always happen. It doesn't always happen. I know of plenty of cases where um, um, for various reasons, that just was not ever going to be an option. But if it is an option, I highly recommend trying for it. Um, you might be able to continue seeing your, your former foster children for birthday visits, or you know, just you might be able to watch them for a while so that their parents are able to get a break, or whatever it may be. But um, a lot of times people go into foster care and their, their fear is that they'll fall in love with these kids and then the kids will go back to their parents and they'll never see them again. That does happen, but it doesn't necessarily have to happen. And if you work on having a relationship with the kids who are in your care, you just might be able to um, remain part of their lives and part of their parents' lives um, in friendship after they've gone back. Um, again, it's not always possible, but when it is, it's definitely worth trying for. So I hope this has been helpful, and um, I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and if you've had experience with this kind of thing, I'd love for you to share that. Um, we can all learn from each other, and I'm really grateful for the resources that a lot of you have shared in the comments um, and how they can help each of us to grow and to be better foster parents. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for caring about foster care, and I'll see you in the next video.